Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. Glad to be with you and always glad to get your phone calls and your emails at 866-A-LARS. I thought one of, mo- one of the most telling things that we heard in the one presidential debate that we're apparently going to be allowed, even though Donald Trump is now over the China virus. In fact, he even traveled to Florida and stood there wearing a, a fairly warm suit coat and tie and all that and, and did very well at a rally. Uh, he seems to have recovered just fine. Joe Biden, uh, still a little bit dim upstairs. But in that debate, Joe Biden was asked, what are you going to do? And he said, I'm going to, if I'm elected president, I will repeal the Trump tax cuts. And since then, both Biden and his vice presidential running mate, Kamala Harris, have been trying to explain, you say you're only going to raise taxes for people above $400,000 in household income, and yet you say you're going to repeal the Trump tax cuts. Isn't that going to raise taxes on virtually everyone who draws a paycheck in America? I thought we'd talk about that with Joel Griffith, who is a research fellow at the Institute for Economic Freedom and Opportunity at the Heritage Foundation. Joel, welcome back to the program. Hey, thank you for having me on today. So you've got Joe Biden, who insists that he's on, and his vice presidential running mate also insists, we're not raising taxes on anybody other than the rich, the people above $400,000. And yet he says they're going to uh, repeal the Trump tax cuts if he gets into office and he has the votes in the Congress. Those two don't go together very well, do they? No, they don't. And that's because the average American family, we're talking people earning middle class wages, the average couple earning middle class wages is actually saving $2,800 per year. So and that, that's, that's just the numbers. And I think most of us, we can actually look at our paychecks. And if we're in that uh, income range or higher, we actually have seen our paychecks increase by that amount or higher. And uh, I think people know that. Now, he doesn't like to admit that families are benefiting from that. But those are the facts. But even if, even if it were true that he were not to raise taxes on those earnings under $400,000, well, well, two things. Number one, he'd be raising taxes on the many billions of businesses across the country. And remember, we went from being one of the least competitive nations when it came to business taxes to being fairly competitive. And that helped drive up business investment. It helped drive up productivity, things that make all of us better off because we can produce more. He would undo that. And longer term, the numbers just don't make sense. If you look at all the promises that they've made, there's just no way that taxes on the wealthy loan could pay for it. Um, at Heritage, we actually added up all those promises that have been made throughout the, the campaign season. You're talking about 50 to $90 trillion over 10 years. And guess what? If you were to take every single dollar from everyone making $200,000 a year or more, every dollar from dollar one, that only covers about half of that spending. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. So imagine a 100% tax rate and assume that somebody making two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars $250,000 would keep on working at a job if 100% of their money, their salary was going to taxes. That's what you're asking us to imagine is somebody makes $200,000 Every single dime goes to taxes. They get not a penny in their paycheck. If the government scooped up all that cash and those people kept on working their jobs, that still wouldn't be enough to pay for all the promises Joe Biden is making? Yeah, if you, if you look at all the promises, things that, have, that either both he and uh, Senator Harris have made of the campaign season. Remember, Medicaid for all was discussed, and I know that he says he's not for that. She has kind of waffled on that, but you look at the Green New Deal that she actually signed her name to as a co-sponsor in the Senate. If you add up all these types of spending proposals, we know that both have supported a continuation of these enormous unemployment benefits that pay people more off the job than on the job. Yeah, if you were to take every dollar from those folks, 200000 plus a year, that only pays for about half of all of these promises on the low end. So we know what it looks like to actually have to pay for this type of government, but you have to go over to Europe. And unfortunately, many of us aren't too familiar with what's going on in Europe, but the average lower income person in Europe making 40000 bucks a year is paying 6000 more in taxes than that type of person here in the United States. If you're going to have this type of extravagant government spending, eventually the middle class, they have to pay for it as well. Well, it and Joel, big bill. Joel, is the game then? that Biden is saying we're going to raise taxes on the rich above 400000 which really is far into rich. What, is it, what, what does it take to make the top 10% of wage earners in America? About $135,000 a year, and you're in the top 
Isn't that about it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're, and you're and, and wealthy by that. And I think by by the time you get to about the middle four hundred thousand, you're in the top one percent. So Biden is saying we're only going to raise taxes on the top one and a half percent of wage earners, and so even fairly well compensated individuals below that. Is he then planning to pay for all those programs by eliminating the tax, uh, the Trump tax cuts, which both the media and Joe Biden and the Democrats have said, oh, that only went to the rich. When you're telling us the average family got almost three thousand bucks back from those tax cuts. If you take those away, does that raise enough money to pay for everything that uh, Biden is promising? You're, you're still not getting you have to raise it substantially more. And it would look something like a national sales tax or far higher payroll taxes. If you go into the fine print on the Bernie Sanders Medicaid for All plan, you go ahead and you actually see what was proposed as a possibility, bigger payroll taxes on the middle class. Uh, You go look at, once again, look at what's happening in Europe. How do they fund their welfare safety net? In France, the payroll tax is 50 plus percent. Think about that. 50 plus percent payroll tax, even if you're middle class. The, the fact is, if you want to expand government like that, you either raise the taxes and it has to come from the middle class as well, or you go ahead and print and borrow money. And all three of those, any of those three options results in economic sluggishness or even worse, sometimes economic misery and lower economic growth. And if you want to be more like Europe, I guess have at it. But keep in mind, even places like Germany, which are fairly well off compared to here, we're doing better. The average family in Germany has $12,000 less a year to spend than they do here. And this is a direct result of the fact that we have a smaller government and we have a freer economy. By the way, I'm talking to Joel Griffith from the Heritage Foundation. Joel, the other piece of this game, and you only mentioned it in your first comment by saying a lot of those taxes are going to be paid by small business owners. So somebody who makes 400000 isn't necessarily a doctor or a lawyer or a Hollywood actor. They may be running a bunch of convenience stores or maybe a seven, you know, they're, they're running a McDonald's or a, a fast food outlet, and they may make fairly good money after having invested a lot of time and effort over the years. But all of those people have people who work for them where you could say, as long as I'm making a pretty good return on my business, I'm willing to employ those people. If the government starts to put the squeeze on me, I'm going to look for places within my budget, my business's budget, to cut expenses. And some of that is going to come in the form of cutting employees, isn't it? Yes, it's, a, it's an absolute disincentive to, uh, to employment, number one, because there's just less, re, less resources to actually invest. Um, But also, when you have the government taking a bigger chunk of the win, for a business owner, they realize that every investment they take is a risk. Some of these these investments are going to pay off and some won't. But they're looking for what is the average return that I'm going to be getting from all my investments. When you go ahead and start slashing um, off a bigger chunk of the win, well, that that lowers the overhaul rate. It means that their overall – these business projects just aren't going to be worthwhile. And this is the very reason why you see places like California, New York, Illinois seeing an exodus of people because those taxes have increased by so much that people are fleeing to seek opportunities elsewhere. You would see the same results on a national level if these types of spending and tax proposals are pushed through. And just to back up what Joel's saying, I just saw the number this week. Last year, last year before the China virus, one half of a million people left California. And most of them moved to Texas and they, because Texas is a low tax environment, low regulation environment. So imagine people leaving a state that, you know, actually has a lot of things to recommend it. But if you say if you make it unfriendly enough, the people who can leave are going to leave. That's Joel Griffith at the Institute for Economic Freedom and Opportunity at Heritage. Joel, thanks very much. Glad to get your calls at 866-HEY-LARS. That's 866-439-5277. Coming up, if restaurants can open, should we let bowling alleys do the same? We'll talk about it next on the Radio Northwest Network.